It is here, the budget-friendly 40 series card with all the newest ray tracing technology. The question is, is the 4060 your next card? Cue the intro sequence. Asus has kindly borrowed us one of their brand new RTX 4060 dual OC cards to find out whether we can actually justify that $300 MSRP. First things first, we need to get it out of the box. This is a nice looking card. It's dual fan and only two slots thick, which makes it a perfectly good option for smaller cases or mini ITX builds. It's got some cool see-through accents which I like and a nice looking backplate, although you don't get any RGB. As for power, it only needs one 8-pin and about a 650 watt power supply should be more than enough juice to run it. So now let's talk performance. My biggest concern going in definitely has to be VRAM. A few years ago, 8 gigabytes was more than enough, but that's not really the case anymore, especially with how large and demanding open world games are getting. The 4060 does at least support the newest DLSS, which it heavily relies on. Without it, the gaming experience is going to be pretty limited, even in 1080p, especially if you want to play newer games and get decent FPS while having all your settings maxed out. Like in Cyberpunk, for example, we saw an FPS of 32 with max settings and ray tracing enabled, but DLSS boosted that to a respectable 55 frames per second when turned on. In more competitive titles where getting all the frames you can matters more than how it looks, turning off ray tracing and lowering some of the settings should be enough to get you to that sweet spot of 144. In Fortnite, this made a difference of almost 50 frames, taking it from around 50 frames per second on max settings and ray tracing enabled to about 100 frames per second on high settings with ray tracing off. In Modern Warfare 2, we saw around 105 frames per second on ultra settings, which jumped to around 142 frames per second just by turning DLSS on. During the last week, I asked all of my subscribers whether they're more interested in 1440p results or 1080p results. And unfortunately, I don't think 1440p is an option to look at, considering what we got with the 1080p results on its own. If you're looking to game in 1440p or above, the 4060 isn't gonna be for you, especially if you want anything near to decent frames or good quality. The next thing I'm always very interested in is the cooling. And this card did run relatively cool throughout testing, especially considering it's a two fan card. I think the lower TDP on these newer cards make sure that thermal throttling shouldn't be a problem. Asus also added a dual BIOS on this card, so we could easily switch it into gaming mode for some extra cooling power just in case. The highest temperatures we saw was about 70 degrees Celsius in normal gaming. If you're looking for a bit more more detailed rundown of what this card can do, I'd recommend check out Gamers Nexus's videos next or even Linus Tech Tips for a bit more of a detailed breakdown. So in the end, it all comes down to do I think it's worth picking up the 4060? Well, it actually really depends. If you're starting a new build from scratch where you're looking at a brand new budget-friendly option, then yes, this isn't a bad call. But if you already have a GPU, especially if it's something like a 3060 or even better, then probably not. I would recommend holding onto your card for a few more months, saving up a little bit longer for the 4070. The slight jump you'll see in performance from the previous generation 3060 doesn't justify the investment. I really feel that Nvidia could have given us a little bit more, especially at the price and compared to the previous generations. But that's just my opinion. I hope you have a great day and if you like the content, remember to subscribe. Anyways, cheerios until the next one. Bye.